Hello everyone, welcome to the session. So in this particular video, we will talk about Z-score. So I'm expecting that until so far you already have watched my previous video where we have discussed in very detail about the normal distribution, right? So now after getting a lot of sense about normal distribution, let's talk about this Z-score concept, which is again pretty much important concept you know, you should know. Whenever I'm saying Z-score, what is the meaning of that? I hope you remember in the last session, we have talked about the standard rule where I have said that this is something which I hope you can see my cursor is a normal distribution where it's well proven that mu is something which we have is mean and sigma is something which we have is standard deviation. So when I'm saying that the data lies from mu minus sigma to mu plus sigma, that data will be of how much percentage? 68% approximately. When we are moving ahead towards mu minus 2 sigma to mu plus 2 sigma, the range is increased from 68 to 95% approximately. And when we will move ahead to mu minus 3 sigma to mu plus 3 sigma, the range will be 99.73% here. Makes sense? Now in this particular case, if you will observe very much carefully, this, this when I'm saying 1 sigma, 2 sigma, 3 sigma, these numbers 1, 2 or 3 is something which I can say is a value of Z, which I can say is a value of Z. What is the meaning of that? Let's try to understand. Z indicates that how many standard deviations you are far from the mean with respect to the mean, how many standard deviations away a data point is. That is something the value of Z. So when I'm saying that the value is 1 or 2 or 3, that is something which I can define that from this mu, which is the mean, this much is the, you know, distance, this, this much is the gap, which we can define. Make sense? Now, if suppose I will provide you a set of data points, how will you try to get the value of a Z? The simple formula is Xi minus mu by sigma. Mu is nothing but I am saying is a mean divided by the standard deviation. So in other words, talking about the similar things that we have already understood in, understood in our last class, where I told you that when your data lies outside the range of mu minus three sigma to mu plus three sigma, that can be considered as an outlier. So can I say that if the value of Z is bigger than three or lesser than minus three, that is an outlier. That is a valid outlier that I can say. That is something which you have to understand. So the same interpretation we can also accumulate with the help of this value of Z. Make sense? So that's why it is also useful for outlier detection. So what I'm saying here, uh, let me try to do the implementation for the same now. I just want to show you what I'm saying here. So now what we can do here is, uh, let me do one thing here. So this is the file. I hope you remember in the last session, I have created this file. So what I will do, I'll just first of all, restart everything and I'll run all. Okay. So you remember all these things we have already seen with the help of a concept of mu minus three sigma to mu plus three sigma. And we detected that there are seven outliers present in this data, right? That is something which we also got from the shape as well. Now what I will do is that I'll try to create one more column here by the name of maybe Z score. Okay. And what is the value of that particular column? I'll say it will be data dot. What is the height value? Minus what I told you Xi minus mu by sigma. So what is the value of mu, which is the mean value data dot height dot mean divided by what is the value of data dot height dot std so what i can do maybe uh, i can just write it like this in a bracket and then division by the standard deviation let's try to see what is the data which we are getting now data dot head so let's try to see uh data dot okay this is not like this yeah now, if you can see, we will be easily able to get one more column here, which indicates the Z score value. I hope it makes sense, right? 
Now I need to check that the value which is bigger than 3 or lesser than minus 3 that are the outliers. So can I write that condition? Can I say that data show me the data points where the data of data dot you can say z score is greater than 3 or so I can write this is in a bracket like this uh, because that is something we understood from the from the graph that we have seen just now data dot z score less than minus 3 that is a part of an outlier let's see let's see first of all it means that how many data points are there which are outliers because we are dealing with the same data that we did in the last session so we got seven outliers there if you remember so if i'll just count it down one two three four five six seven you can just verify also at your home we are getting the same set of data points which are a part of outliers it's done so now what i can do to check to get the data with no outliers with no outliers using the concept of z score using the concept of z score what i will do here i'll say data i just reverse this condition i'll just re copy this condition and we will reverse it so i'll just copy it i'll say it is less than three it is greater than minus three and in between i will say and right and then i'll just copy this name to display to you what is the shape of this data point can you see it is triple line three so if i'll just show you the outliers uh, which are there it means there are seven outliers again which are these only and if i show you the data set it contains triple line three rows and four columns because now we have added one more column called as z score in the original data if you remember we will be having we will be having in total i can say shape in total 10000 records so it means the same outliers we will be able to get via a z score as well the same thing that we have already done with the help of using the concept of that what we call as mu minus 3 sigma to mu plus 3 sigma the same concept we can do via a value of z so in this video my basic objective is to talk about that what is this z is all about what it is representing and how that value of z score will help you to determine the outliers in any data i hope that now the concept of z scores is pretty much clear to everyone if you still have any sort of doubt do let me know in the comment section i'll for sure try to resolve it as soon as possible with this happy learning to all bye bye everyone and i'll see you all in my next upcoming video